I'm Nano Nomaru. I'm 25 and pregnant. I wasn't on good terms with my family. This is Rena, my sister. She was two years older than me. She was really pretty. She looked like a model. She looked nothing like me. It was hard to believe that I was related to her. And my parents never paid attention to me. They called me a mistake. And my sister treated me like crap too. She always looked down on me. I hated living with them, so I moved out once I started college. That's where I met Soral, my husband. We got married right after graduation. I never thought I'd get married before my sister. And she was really happy for me, which came to me as a surprise. Good for you! Can't wait for you to have kids! Uh, okay. Not sure why she was saying that, but I didn't want to know, so I didn't put much thought into it. Then, about six months later, I was pregnant. Rena was really happy to hear the news. But that's when I realized that she was planning something. It all started when I was eight months pregnant. Hey, how's the baby? Good. Good. Good to hear. You're due in August, right? Yup. Can't wait! Let's just hope she's not ugly like you. Stop being mean. I'm serious. She's a girl. Looks are very important. You know that. I guess. Anyways, I'm really glad you got pregnant. What does that mean? Oh, nothing. Hmm? I still can't believe you decided to have a baby. I don't understand. What are you saying? I mean, you're all fat now. And they say how hard it is to get your old body back. And your boobs will be all saggy. And you're gonna have stretch marks all over your stomach and stuff. Gross. Makes me sick just thinking about it. So what? It's all part of having a baby. Well, I guess it's okay when you're ugly and flat like you. I could never do it. You don't want kids then? Of course I do! Uh, you're contradicting yourself. Oh, I got an idea. You adopting? Oh, uh, not quite. Surrogate mother? That's expensive though, right? I don't know. It's okay, no worries. You just get some rest, okay? Okay, thanks. Eat well, stay hydrated. Bye! She was acting so weird. What was she up to? Two months later, I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Lord. A lot of women go back to their parents' house after they give birth, but not me. I didn't want to be around them, so I decided to go and stay with my husband's parents for a while. They were so kind to me, but then... My sister texted me. Hey! Why aren't you coming home? I want to see the baby! Hey! Stop ignoring me! Sorry, I was knocked out. Huh? Knocked out? I gotta feed the baby every three hours. I'm so sleepy. Oh, come on. It can't be that hard. It is. I gotta change her diaper and put her to sleep again. Then I gotta wake up again to feed her. I can't even sleep for an hour. That sounds rough. I'm dizzy. I guess I can wait a bit longer then. Huh? Oh, nothing. How long is this gonna last? Depends. A year? Two years? Once she's off the milk, I'm sure it'll get easier. Um, okay. Gotcha. Good luck. Hey, at least send me a picture of the baby, okay? I want to make sure that she doesn't look like you. I should have known she was up to something, but I was so busy with the baby, I couldn't even think properly. I just didn't have time to think about her. Then, two years went by. My daughter was starting kindergarten next year. She was all grown up. She was adorable. But then, something happened. It all started with a picture my sister sent me. What the hell? 
What is this? You get the picture? So yeah, it's exactly what it looks like. What the hell? What are you doing with Sorrel? He's in love with me. He says he's gonna leave you for me. What? Sorrel? No way! He was so easy. I don't blame him. What the hell? I'm your sister. So, and to be honest, I don't care about him. What? I want your daughter, Sakura. Huh? What are you saying? I told you. I don't want to give birth, but I still want a child that's related to me by blood. So I used you to have my baby. Wait, you're saying you're gonna marry Sorrel so you can be her mother? Yup, you got it. Stop joking around. I'm serious. I wanted to do this sooner, but it seemed like a lot of work and waking up every three hours, no thanks. So I waited for her to grow up. She's like two now, right? I want her to forget about you, so I gotta act quick. So I made a move on Sorrel. You're crazy. You're insane. I don't care. I'm beautiful. I can do whatever I want. Shut up. So hand him over to me. Now. No. Give it up. You don't even have a job. How are you going to provide for her, huh? I know you quit your job after you gave birth. Sorrel told me. You're not getting her. Never. You tell Sorrel that too. You're so stubborn. Oh well. We'll see you there soon. Let's just talk about this, okay? <laughs> nice try. Nobody's taking my daughter away from me. I packed up my things and drove off with my daughter to see my parents-in-law. Please help. Please. I told them everything that had happened. They looked very surprised and upset. They were furious with Sorrel. You can stay here as long as you like. Nobody's taking our granddaughter away. I'm gonna tear him apart. I was so grateful that they were on my side. Thank goodness. We stayed at their house for a week. We stayed inside the entire time. Sorrel came over a few times, but his parents didn't let him in. Get off my property! You're a disgrace! You're no longer welcome here. Get out! They cut all ties with her. Then my sister texted me. Where are you? Give it up already. No way. I'm going to call the cops. This is kidnapping. Go ahead. I'm her mother. You think you can run away from us? We already got a lawyer and everything. You're done for. And the divorce has been finalized already. What? I never signed any papers. <laughs> it's not that hard to forge your signature. He's my husband now. Now all that's left to do is to get our daughter back. You don't even have a job. Give it up already. I'm not giving up that easily. Huh, <laughs> good luck. You're gonna bag groceries for a living, huh? Just to make it clear, Sorrel isn't paying you a dime. I don't expect him to. <laughs> good luck. I showed her text to my parents-in-law. I had a long talk with them. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life running away. I came up with a plan and decided to fight back. Three months later... Give it up already. This has gone on long enough. Oh, hey. I was just about to text you. You giving up? Nope. I'm ready to strike back. Huh? You insane? What can you do? You're a shut-in. You're the one that's insane. You've always been crazy. What? Shut up! Let me put this in terms even you can understand. Simply put, you're screwed, Rena. What? First, you two forged official documents. That's a felony. Altering private documents, counterfeiting official documents, counterfeiting digital documents, the list goes on and on. And as for Sorrel, he's guilty of bigamy too. What? Shut up! You were gonna leave him anyways. All I did was sign the papers for you. Yes, and that's a felony, dumbass. What did you call me? You heard me. 
and I already pressed charges. You might get arrested, so... Arrested? Yeah, that's what happens when you break the law. I could drop the charges if you want, though. Huh? Why? I'm gonna sue you both for damages, so... I can't have you two going to jail. If that happens, I won't be able to get my money. What? Why do we have to pay you money? That makes no sense. Are you serious? You really don't get this, do you? You're my sister. I can do whatever I want to you. Wow. I guess this is partially mom and dad's fault too, but... Whatever. I'm not going easy on you. If you really believe that, that's fine, but... That won't fly in court. That's not how things work. You broke the law, and you're gonna pay for it. I'm suing you both for $30,000 each. Screw you! I'm not giving you a dime! My lawyer sent them the documents after that. Then... What is happening? Talk to my lawyer. I got a lawyer. He said I had zero chance of winning this. Well, yeah. After everything you two did, no lawyer in the world would be willing to take your case. And he said I'm gonna lose custody too! How did you do this? You don't even have money to hire a lawyer. Uh, who said I was broke? I'm not. Stop lying! I know you quit your job. So? I still work from home. Huh? I had to quit because Soral never helped me once with our daughter. But he wasn't making enough for all of us anyways. So, I started writing blogs and stuff for money. I'm pretty famous now, you know. I just got an offer from a publisher too. No way! Soral never told me about any of this. I knew he'd stop working if I told him, so... I never told him. What? So, yeah. I make more than enough for the both of us, so no worries. You should start worrying about yourself, you know? What do you mean? You'll see. You're under arrest! No way! Do they pay me for damages? Yup. The thing is, my parents paid me on her behalf, so I decided to call the cops on her. <laughs> so the cops took them away and charged them with all kinds of stuff. She sent me letters, begging me to drop the charges, but I ignored them all. I went to see their trial, though. My sister was a mess. She looked terrible. She looked like a completely different person. By the time she gets out, I probably won't be able to recognize her. They'll be out in a few years, though. So I decided to move out of town, just in case. Today I live happily with my daughter in the countryside. My name is Harumi. I'm a 29-year-old homemaker. I want to talk about an incredible incident that happened to me, an ordinary homemaker. I've been married for three years to Hidekatsu, who is a year older than me. We are happily married, without any problems. The only thing is that we are having difficulties conceiving, so we don't have a child. It's not that I don't want a baby, but I don't want a baby that much to go through all the trouble. So we put the issue of having a baby on the back burner. One day, my husband's younger sister, my sister-in-law, Emery, sent me a bunch of line messages. Hey, Harami, long time no see. It's been a long time, Emery. I heard you live in your husband's hometown, Hokkaido. Well, actually, about that, we are getting a divorce. It was really out of the blue, so I'm back here now. Oh, I see. It's the first time I've heard. I only left home last week, so... Oh, I see. So are you staying with your parents? No, I received a divorce settlement, so I rented an apartment. I'm looking for a job now. Well, if I can be of any help, let me know. Actually, you can help me with something. Can you babysit Sayaka this weekend? Sayaka is your daughter, right? She's two years old, isn't she? No, she has turned three. Well... Kids grow up so quickly. It's not a problem to babysit. But do you have any plans? I have a job interview. My parents live far away, so it is quite inconvenient to ask them. Hmm, that's true. Sure, leave her to me. Thank you. I owe you one. No big deal. Besides, I want to see my niece too. So what time are you coming back to collect her? Can you keep her till the next morning? I want to meet up with my friends too. After the interview. 
Well, we have plans in the morning, so it is a bit difficult. Please? Ever since I had a child, I had no free time to myself. All right, then. I'll see what I can do. This is how I ended up babysitting my sister-in-law's daughter, Sayaka. I like kids, so I was quite excited about it, but... Sayaka was a little monster! She wasn't a little boisterous or tomboy-like. She was on a different level. She destroyed everything in her sight, ran around at full speed in our small room, so I couldn't take my eyes off her. She even ate spaghetti with her bare hands. When I tried to tell her off gently, she cried like crazy. By the time her mom came to pick her up, I was exhausted. Honestly, I never wanted to babysit her again. Thank you for the other day. I got the job thanks to you. And I had a nice time with my friends too. I'm glad I could help. Did my daughter give you a hard time? She's an active child. She is very active. I was a little tired. Remember, I am nearly 30 years old now. But then, it is a good thing she has a lot of energy. Well, she does give me a hard time at home too. So, honestly, do you feel you never want to babysit her again? No, her tomboy nature is cute. I'm glad to hear that. So you can babysit her next weekend again, right? Huh? I made a promise to meet up with a friend. You know, I start a new job from next month, so my friend wants to celebrate with me before I start. Oh, I see. So, can you babysit her for a day like last time? Of course I can. Like this, she talked me into babysitting Sayaka again. I have to look after her, as I did say yes. Sayaka came to her home again, and like the last time, she acted like a monster. Last time my husband worked late, so he did not see her behavior. This time, he was at home from the morning, and when he saw how she acted, he was lost for words. Both of us were bossed around by Sayaka. We had a very busy day, but the next morning... Emery, it's already 9 o'clock. When are you coming to pick Sayaka up? Sayaka is missing her mom, too. Oh, sorry. I forgot to tell you. Tell me what? Me and my friends got carried away and we decided to go to Osaka on the spot. Osaka? I've never been to the USJ. And when I mentioned this, my friend said, let's go. So I was forced to go there. I'm on the bullet train right now. Hang on. Who's going to come and pick Sayaka up then? Well, I'm going to stay in Osaka today and tomorrow. So, can you look after her till the day after tomorrow? It's not a request, is it? Do I have a choice? Thanks! So, the time spent being bossed around by a little monster was extended without choice. We can't even count how many times we wanted to give up. It was meant to be till the day after tomorrow, but somehow it got longer and longer. And in the end, we looked after Sayaka for four long days. When Emery finally came back to collect her. Well, thank you so much. Osaka was so tempting, so I ended up staying there for more time than I planned. She was not in the slightest remorseful. On top of that, after the incident, she left Sayaka with us every weekend, as if it was okay with us. She didn't even ask. She just turned up at the door and forced us to take her daughter and left. Soon, it wasn't just the weekends. I suddenly realized that I spent half the week looking after Sayaka. Even my normally gentle husband couldn't stand this situation anymore. Can I speak to you for a moment? If you're busy, we can talk later. Sayaka just fell asleep, so I can talk now. What is it? The way Amiri is acting recently, it's getting too much. You can tell her straight, if you want, you know? I want to, but I keep thinking if I did, what will happen to Sayaka? If I don't look after her, she would be left alone at home, so... Well, that could happen. My stupid sister comes to our home every time after I leave for work. She knows if I were there, I'd tell her off. She really is thick-skinned or something. You can be straight and tell me. She's an idiotic, self-centered woman. I don't want to be that harsh. She is family, after all. You're so nice, but my sister is taking advantage of that niceness, you know? I'm sorry. I'm making you worry, too. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to blame you. I'll tell her straight next time she comes to our house. 
If you keep on looking after Sayaka, you'll collapse. No, it's okay. I can keep doing this. But my sister will never understand unless we tell her. By the way, the reason why Sayaka acts the way she does is that... I do not think she has ever been taught to behave by anyone. She does not even go to a nursery school. Well, come to think of it, it could be. She behaves like that because no grown-ups have told her. But if you care about her in her future, someone must teach her. You want to be that person? You don't owe her anything, nor do you have any responsibility. You are right, but I've been involved with her long enough. I can't just abandon her like that. I'll take this opportunity to play her mom. I married such a wonderful woman, you know. This is how I decided to look after and tell her to behave herself. If she continues like this, she will become a problem child who no one can look after. Since that day, I made my mind up. I dealt with her with more discipline. When she does something naughty, I tell her no, which is a normal thing to do as a parent. Sayaka at first had a fit or cried, but surprisingly, soon she started to listen to me. Perhaps her terrible past behavior was a way of getting my attention. She's quickly growing into a regular child. After about a year spending time like this, Sayaka turned five. We paid for her to go to nursery school. As predicted, my sister-in-law dropped a new bomb. Sayaka has turned into such a well-behaved girl lately. It's all thanks to you. She's kind and smart, that's why. She takes after her mom. <laughs> Seriously, you're acting like her mom more than I am. Don't say something like that. Saika's mom is irreplaceable. But if it's true, I'm in trouble. What do you mean? Actually, I have a boyfriend now. He is the son of a president of a company. Even though it's not a big company, but the president nonetheless. That's great. I know, right? So I don't want to let him go no matter what. Naturally. He used to work at a branch in Bali, so he is moving there. I'm going with him. I see. I think Saika can now get along with people anywhere. No, I can't chase him dragging a child. So I have decided to go on my own for the time being. What What about Sayaka? Can you look after her at your home for a while? <sighs> Wait a second. How long are you going to live there? I'm not sure. But two years maybe? Two years? Are you going to be away from her for that long? Well, she already spends half a year at your home. So, no problem. Saika seems to be happier when she's with you anyway. That's not the point. Are you serious? Oh, I'm dead serious. I can't let go of an opportunity like this. When I become the wife of the president, Sayaka can have luxuries in life. So, in the long run, I'm doing this for her too. She is talking crazy. I thought she was an irresponsible woman before, but I didn't know she is this bad. Of course, my husband and I tried to dissuade her, but she didn't listen. In the end, she shoved Sayaka to us and ran off abroad. Regardless of circumstances, I need to decide to take the role of a mother. Fortunately, she doesn't seem to be shocked by the turn of events. Two years later, Sayaka has become a first year elementary school student. We have all become very close, like real parents and daughter. We assume that my sister-in-law will just keep living abroad with her boyfriend, but... Long time no see! I will be coming back to Japan the day after tomorrow, so I'll come and see you straight away. Huh? Why are you coming here? I'm coming to collect Sayaka, of course. I told you it would be two years, didn't I? You did, but you didn't even contact us. Over the past two years, not even once. Don't try and act like your mom after what you've done. What a thing to say! Are you surprised? You abandoned your own child. Yet you have no shame saying to me that you will come and collect her. But I do appreciate what you've done. You looked after Sayaka for so long. That's why I don't want this to become bigger than it is. You know? What are you going to do? I am her real mother, so I can talk to the authorities about that. Just like that, she came back and tried to leave with Sayaka, but... No! Mommy! I'm your mommy! Come with me now! Sayaka cried so much asking for my help, while resisting to be taken away by my sister-in-law. 
at that point, I finally came to a realization. I remember that I am her mom now. So, I persuaded my sister-in-law to leave for the time being. And that evening... Emery, I need to talk to you. It's important. What? If you have time to talk to me like this, don't you need to do something about Sayaka? I'll be back around next week, you know. Next time, I don't care if she cries or screams. I'll take her with me no matter what. No, you won't. I will never let you take Sayaka away. You are so stubborn. It doesn't matter if you don't want me or not. She is my daughter. No, ever since you abandoned her and went abroad, or maybe even before, I have been her mom all along. You might have been too attached to her because you've been living with her for so long. But, no matter what you think, I am legally her mother. Yes, that's why I am appealing to the authorities. I will tell the authorities that you neglected your own daughter. Huh? It's true. You left her for two years and never even contacted us. Do, do you really think it can work? I'll make it work. I already hired a lawyer. I will sue you if necessary. But that could cause you a problem, couldn't it? I didn't know why she wanted to live with Sayaka after all this time. I don't think she suddenly found her motherly love towards her child. The mystery was solved with a phone call from my husband's parents. What triggered her change was the breakup with her boyfriend. She tried to move back to her parents' home after the breakup, but... Of course, her actions were known to her parents. My father-in-law was furious and refused to take her in. As she had nowhere to go, she had to find a way for her parents to take her in. That's why she wanted Sayaka. No matter how angry her parents are, Emery thought that they would never let their granddaughter live on the street. I was trying to fight her till the end, so Emery couldn't do anything against me. Besides, she needs to worry about herself before anything else. She didn't have a place to live or food to feed herself. And this is how my sister-in-law disappeared from our lives completely. I guess, even now, she's still not leading a decent life. My name is Nano, and I'm a 35-year-old working mother. I currently live with my husband, Masayoshi, and our beloved daughter, Sakura. We live in an area with a lot of apartment complexes, so we have a lot of neighbors with kids that go to the same school as Sakura. Those of us with kids are required to join the neighborhood's parents association, and we occasionally help out with things like moving the local park's grass, patrolling the neighborhood while the kids were off at school, and cleaning out garbage on the streets near the school. So, the members of the parents' association are always quite busy. But up until now, everyone did their part without making a fuss. But recently, she moved in. And since then, things have never been the same. Her name is Rena Yakamachi. Her daughter is in the same grade as Sakura. And she and her family moved into a room on the highest floor of the apartment that sits right across the street from us. At the time, I was responsible for running the parents' association. Because of that, Miss Yakamachi sent me a message introducing herself when she moved in. But, as you're about to see, the messages were... ridiculous. Hey, my name is Yakamachi and I'm gonna be joining the neighborhood's parents' association. I'm Sugo. Nice to meet you. Don't mean to rush things, but I was gonna ask. Do I have to attend tomorrow's cleaning session? What do you mean? I was thinking of not going tomorrow. Oh, did you have other plans? I don't know how to put this, but... But my husband works at a very prestigious firm. Okay. And don't you think it's a bit ridiculous that a person married to someone like that has to get her hands all dirty from cleaning the streets? But all members of the association are expected to do their part in keeping the neighborhood clean. Then fill in for me. What? You seem like the kind of person that loves to do stuff like that. What's the difference between someone who likes to clean and someone who doesn't? I don't mean to offend you, but your family isn't exactly rich, right? What makes you say that? 
Oh, I could tell. I saw your daughter walking home from school today, but she was wearing Uniqlo clothing. That stuff poor people wear. Hey, Uniqlo's great. What are you talking about? It's comfortable, cheap, and easy to wear. See? That's what I'm talking about. You even sound poor. I only get the best of the best for my daughter. Not that cheap stuff from Uniqlo. If she gets it dirty, cleaning it is hard work. Then how is she supposed to play outside? It's fine. I teach her not to waste her time doing what the poor people do. Like playing outside and getting her clothes dirty. Huh. Okay. What you teach your daughter is none of my business, but I'm gonna have to ask you to participate tomorrow. Did you not hear what I just said? Those are the rules. Oh, come on! Oh, wait. I know what to do. Which is... Oh, come on, Miss Sugo. You should have told me earlier. Tell me what? You want money, right? What? I heard you work part-time at an office. Part-time? I just work shorter hours. Oh, sorry. I've never had to work too, so I don't know how everything works. But you're working because your husband doesn't make enough, right? Silly me. I should have known that you wouldn't have said yes if I didn't offer you any cash. The cleaning shift is like an hour, right? How about $20 and you do it for me? Are you kidding me? I'm only working because I want to. No matter how much you offer me, I'm not gonna cover your shift for you. Come on, I know you want the money. You're poor and you want my money. So admit it and just take it. How about $30? Just do it yourself. Oh, come on, you're so unreasonable. Even after all that, Miss Yakamachi never showed up for her shift the next day. If that wasn't enough, she started spreading unfounded rumors about me when she was the one that skipped her shift. I guess when you're poor, you lose the goodness in your heart. I feel bad for their daughter. A child should never have to grow up in that house like that. I think it's a parent's responsibility to expose your child to as many things as you can, to create new possibilities for their future. So, my daughter has like five extracurriculars she's a part of. But that's really hard on me too, since I have to drive her there and back. But I always tell myself that I have to put in the effort for her future. Oh, sorry. I forgot your daughter only takes piano lessons. And you use a bite to get her there and back, right? I envy you. What does she have against me? And things got gradually worse, with Miss Yakamachi starting to set her target on other families in the neighborhood as well. I'm grabbing dinner at a Michelin three-star restaurant. I'll let you know if it's any good. Oh, wait. I forgot you guys won't be able to afford it. My bad. Damn it. And because of her, the parents' association was split into two sides. The ones that live in Miss Yakamuchi's apartment building, and the other members of the neighborhood that were being mistreated by Miss Yakamachi. While this went on, Miss Yakamachi kept skipping out on her cleaning shifts. And so, parents on my side of the conflict were furious with Miss Yakamachi and her behavior. Miss Yakamachi! You're supposed to be on patrol duty today! Why are you not here? Oh, shut up! I'm busy in the mornings. We're all busy too, you know. That's not true! You and I are completely different. My daughter has a whole closet full of clothes, so it takes a while for her to pick her clothes out for the day. And she has to set her hair according to the clothes that she picked out for the day. So I don't have any time to go on patrol duty or whatever it is. Your daughter just wears the one pair of Unclo clothing that she has every day. Must be easy for you. That all sounds like a you problem. We all have things we need to get done in the morning, but despite that, we take time out of our day to patrol the neighborhood for the safety of our kids. Do you understand all that? I never asked anyone to patrol the neighborhood. If they're all so worried, why don't they just drive their kids to school every day? You know that's never gonna happen. Most parents are at work when school ends for the day. That sounds like a you problem. You pretend to be worried about your child's safety, but you end up sacrificing it since your husband doesn't make enough. 
sounds to me like you don't really care about your kids' safety after all. That's a big load of BS. But it's the truth. If you're so worried, you should just cover my shift. Problem solved. You don't want my money, right? Why don't you try to help us out a bit, since we're the ones paying all the taxes? The audacity of this woman. Even though I kept on sending her messages reminding her when her shifts were, I was left on red every single time. What's worse, other people started ditching their shifts as well when they started noticing that Miss Yakamachi never showed up for any of hers. Things got so bad that we no longer had enough people to fill in each shift. So, the association held an emergency meeting to discuss what we should do about this. But the group of moms on Miss Yakamachi's side of the conflict were not willing to give in to our suggestions. Are you alright, Nano? I don't know what to do anymore. How do I make them cooperate? I know you don't want to do it, but have you thought about telling them about you-know-what? I don't know about that. Besides, I don't want to bring you into this, so... But more than anything else, I hate seeing you beaten up like this. I'll try to fix things on my own. I'm gonna make them understand that someone's gotta get these things done around here. If things come down to it, don't hesitate to do what you need to do. Thanks, honey. And so, I continued in my attempt to persuade Miss Yakamachi and her gang to show up for their shifts, but they would not budge. So, the other members of the association who were more understanding were the only ones that showed up for their shifts for about three months. Around then, my daughter's school had a field day. Parents rushed to the school that day to capture their child on camera, including us. The kids were supposed to eat lunch with their parents, so we got a space in the corner of the schoolyard and ate from the bento that I made this morning. That looks amazing! Alright, let's eat! But when we were eating our lunch peacefully... Oh, hey Miss Sugo, may I sit next to you guys? There they were, Miss Yakamachi and her daughter grinning and looking down on us. There's plenty of space around the field, why does she have to sit next to us? We hadn't even responded when Miss Yakamachi started to spread her blanket around in that space next to us. We're having takeaways from a Michelin 3-star restaurant for lunch. Yay! This foray grass looks amazing. I see you made your own lunch. Suits you very well. I could see that she was holding back since her daughter was there, but it was obvious that she looked down on us as poor peasants. Homemade isn't so bad, you know. This chicken is amazing! <laughs> I mean, if that's what makes you guys happy, why not? I'm not sharing any of ours with you guys, so don't ask. Did they come here just to brag? We were having fun until they came along. We, or rather, I had enough. She could brag to me and insult me all she wanted, but she can't bring in my husband and my daughter into this. I was about to have a word or two with Miss Yakamachi when... Hey, honey, over here. There's plenty of space over there! Why are you guys cramped up here? Oh, uh, we just wanted to eat near Miss Sugo since we're so close. Miss Sugo? Wait, boss? What? When Miss Yakamachi saw my husband's face, he could not hide his surprise. Huh? Honey? What do you mean, boss? Who are you talking about? Mr. Sugo right here is the president of our client company! Oh, I get it. He works at one of your subcontractors, right? No, no! He's the CEO of Money Robo Corporations! Our biggest and best client! M Money Robo Corporations? Oh, crap. They found out. So I don't have to hide it anymore, right? Yeah, I really didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want to sound all cocky, but... Wait, if he's the president, that makes you... first lady? Well, I guess. Are you kidding me? I hope business is well for you, sir. Likewise. Miss Yakamachi knew she had messed up and was looking around as if she was searching for help. And meanwhile, her daughter seemed upset about the fact that her father was being all polite to the person she had just been making fun of. Hey, Dad, stop that. These people are nowhere near as rich and cool as us. As soon as she said that, Miss Yakamachi was visibly shocked. H hey, take that back. Why? You always see the same thing. We're different from them, right? And that's why you don't have to go to your shifts. Shut up! What? How? What do you mean you don't have to go to your shifts? 
No, wait. This is all a big misunderstanding. I wasn't asking you! Miss Sugo, what's going on? I could no longer keep it in, so I told Mr. Yakamachi the type of behavior Miss Yakamachi had been taking over the past three months. Miss Yakamachi tried to step in a couple times to explain herself, but her husband shut her down completely. And so, all she could do was sit on the ground looking all defeated. When I finished telling her husband about what she had done... You little old people! You choose to disrespect the owner of our apartment complex! Huh? Owner? What? Mr. Sugo owns the apartment we live in? Yup. Oh, tell me this is a joke! You spend as much money as you please for God knows what! And all the while you don't even take care of things around the house! And now you're disrupting the order of the Parents Association and causing havoc in the neighborhood?! I've had it up to here with you! We'll talk more about this when we get back! W wait please honey, I'm sorry! Shouldn't you be apologizing to them first? Miss Sugo, I'm so sorry! I'll show up for all my shifts from now on, so please forgive me! I don't really care anymore. Just talk it out amongst yourselves. See? She said she'd forgive me, so you'll forgive me too, right? Absolutely not! No! After they got back, Mr. Yakamachi gave his wife a good scolding and made her admit to everything she had done up until this point. Apparently, it wasn't the first time Miss Yakamachi got on her husband's nerve. She'd been using up all of her husband's savings for a while, and her husband had taken her credit card away because of it. But without the card, she couldn't live like a celebrity. So she thought to herself, Eh, if things get bad, I'll tell my husband. And started taking out loans from the bank. Believe it or not, she took out a total of 30k in loans. She hid the invoices sent to her from her husband. But when he found out, he was furious. He had enough and filed for a divorce immediately. While their daughter told them that she wanted to be with her dad because he was rich, Mr. Yakamachi had other ideas. You always sided with your mother, so you're gonna go live with her! You're gonna learn how hard it is to make a living along with her! And so, she was turned away by her father. Miss Yakamachi was kicked out of her husband's apartment, and now lives in an old, dirty apartment with her daughter. She works part-time now, and it seems like she's learned how hard it is to make money. Since then, the truth about who the owner of the apartment complex was spread like wildfire. So, the parents that were on Miss Yakamachi's side made an awkward return to the Parents Association. It, it was all Miss Yakamachi. She told us not to go to our shifts. Some of them pretended like it wasn't their fault, and to be honest, it was pathetic. Well, in any case, the Parents Association returned to its former glory with Miss Yakamachi gone. But everyone is trying to act all nice and polite to me, which is weird. I guess I'll get used to it eventually. We all have to be responsible for the safety of our children in our community. It should go without saying, but sometimes we turn our backs from that responsibility thinking that others will take care of it. But this whole incident made me realize how important it was for each person to act responsibly in their community. I'm Yuki. I'm in 11th grade. My family owned a business. I was their firstborn son. It was just me and my sister, Rena, so they were planning to make me the next CEO. They made me learn all kinds of things as a kid. I had a pretty busy schedule, but I was the diligent type, so I did well both in and out of school. Then I got into a really good school. Things were looking good, but then, when I was in 11th grade, tragedy struck. Ah! Ah! Yuki! Mom! You okay? I can't feel my feet! I can't move them! What? what? I got hit by a truck. I was paralyzed from the waist down. My parents were shocked. Hey, I'm still me! I'm gonna do everything I can, so don't worry, okay? But after the accident, they started treating me differently. First, they made me quit all my extracurricular activities. Then they made me switch schools. What? Seriously? You can't keep going there in a wheelchair? What? You know how hard I had to study to get in? It's okay, son. It's over. They pulled me out of the school. Before the accident, they wouldn't leave me alone. But now they didn't even talk to me. Why? Because they didn't need me anymore. They started focusing on Rena, the spoiled daughter. They wanted to find a nice rich guy for her and make her son the next CEO. 
Man, all the money we spent on him. What a waste. I guess we'll just have to bet it all on Rena now. What should we do with him? Who cares? He's useless to us now. I was shocked, but this was just the beginning. Hey! What do you want? It's summer vacation. Yeah. You just started at your new school, right? You don't have any plans for vacation, do you? No. Of course you don't. You can't even play sports now, so... Sorry I asked. That's not it at all. There are other extracurricular activities too, you know? Like band. <laughs> band? Sounds pretty lame. Shut up! It'll be perfect for you though. But at least you don't have to go to cram school and stuff like before. I'm still gonna work hard. I can still study. I may be disabled, but that's not gonna stop me from moving forward. Okay, then help me with something. Huh? I got a lot of homework for summer vacation. But I got plans. Lots of it. So I don't have time to do it. I don't get to stay home all day long, like you, so... Shut up! I'm not doing your homework! Why not? You want to study, right? Come on! No! And what if Mom and Dad find out? They'll be furious! No, they won't. How can you be sure? Because when I told them I didn't have time to do homework, they said to ask you. They're the ones that put me up to this. Huh? Come on, it's the least you can do for the family. Just do it. You're lying! I'm serious. It's so funny how they treat you like crap now. <laughs> what? I... Just give it up, okay? You're finished. And help me out, okay? It's the least you can do. I didn't know what to say. I was so shocked. Everything was about her now. She was out of control. And she was spending their money like crazy on clothes and makeup. And there was nothing I could do about it. A year later, I was in 12th grade now. It was time to prepare for college, but then... You're 18. You're an adult now. Go live on your own. They kicked me out of the house right after graduation! And they refused to pay for college! Living by myself was harder than I thought. This one time I fell in front of my apartment and I couldn't get up for hours! And I couldn't get normal jobs like other students, so money was tight. But I did pretty good in school, so I got a job teaching other kids online. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough to put me through college. I was shocked when they kicked me out, but now I realized that it was a great opportunity for me. I no longer had to worry about the family business. I could do whatever I wanted now. Being in a wheelchair wasn't easy, but I didn't want to let that stop me from making something out of myself. So I studied hard day and night. I started interning at various companies to test my abilities. Four years later, I got a job at a big firm. I was in charge of business strategies. I worked day and night. Life was good. Then, about five years later, I got a text from someone. Hello, I'm Masayoshi Sugo. Is this Yuki? Yes. Sorry to bother you like this. I recently got engaged to your sister, Rena. What? Oh. So you didn't know? No. I haven't talked to my family in ten years, so... I see. Our wedding is coming up. But when I told her to invite you, she said you were busy with work. I asked them if I could at least introduce myself, but they said no. So yeah. Ah, so that's why you texted me. Um, why are they like this? Did something happen between you and them? I heard you went to one of the best schools in the country, so I don't know why they're trying to make me the next CEO. I see. Wanna meet up? I'll explain everything to you. That would be great. Thank you. I met up with Masayoshi on the weekend. Hey! Hello. Well, this is it. This is why my family doesn't want to talk about me. Uh, what do you mean? I don't understand. You're a good person, I can tell. Then I explained everything to him. I told him how I ended up here and how my parents kicked me out of the house. His face started to turn red. That's unacceptable! You sure you want to be a part of that family? Ugh! Hey, I know this is gonna sound weird, but I still have feelings for Rena. And no offense, but I gotta hear their side of the story too before I make any decisions. I have an idea to settle this thing once and for all. Will you help me? 
Then he told me his plan. It was pretty simple, but it sounded like a good idea. So I said yes. The next day... Hey! Masayoshi? What are you doing here? What's wrong? I'm just visiting my parents. Right, right. Yeah, but this isn't a very good time. They started to panic, then Rena came out. Mom, Dad, get him out of here. Rena, long time no see. Look, I'm getting married, okay? I don't want to be seen with you, freak. Get out of here, now. You want me to leave? Yes, never show up here again. We don't need you anymore. Did you hear that? Yeah, this is just terrible. What Whoa. the? Masayoshi? I had no idea you were like this. I'm really disappointed. Why are you here? You wouldn't introduce me to your brother, so I reached out to him myself. He told me everything. What? Sorry, but the marriage is off. I want nothing to do with this family. Hold on, wait! Yeah, who's gonna take over a family business then? Not my problem. You guys should have never kicked him out of the house. Why not? He can't even walk. Uh, so what? You don't need to be able to walk to run a business, you know. Yuki worked hard all these years. He works at one of the biggest companies in the country now. But you didn't know that. What? No way! I respect him very much. I'm not gonna just swoop in and take his place as the next CEO. No way. Fine, we'll make him CEO, and you can be vice president. Yeah, good deal. That'll work just fine. I can't do that. Sorry, but no. Goodbye. Wait, Maya Yoshi! Oh, by the way, I know you're cheating on me. I did my homework. What? 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 Let's go. They were panicking. We left without saying a word. They were screaming at Masayoshi, but he ignored them and shut the door. You sure about this? Absolutely. No offense, but I want nothing to do with that family. It felt pretty good, actually. A year later, I quit my job and started my own company with Masayoshi. Our goal is to create an inclusive society for people with disabilities. We're just a small startup, but things were looking good. Time to get to work! My name is Sayaka Noro. I'm a 27-year-old stay-at-home wife. Today, I'd like to tell you about an incident that happened between my family and me. My parents own several businesses and are quite rich, so I was treated like a princess growing up. My husband Shunji and I met a few years ago. He was a superior at work who was two years older than me. Though he was very smart and competent at his job, he comes from an average middle-class family. So our families were quite different to say the least, but that didn't stop us from getting married. In fact, things went pretty smoothly. And now, we're renting a room in the city and living happily as a married couple. We got along well with one another, and we're very happy with our situation until I got a text from my sister-in-law, Yurina. Hey, Sayaka, I wanted to ask you a favor. Is that alright? Yeah, is there something I can do for you? Well, recently, my salon hasn't been doing too well. Oh yeah, I remember you saying that you opened a nail salon. Yeah, and I don't think I can pay its rent this month. Oh, that's terrible. So I was wondering if I could borrow some money from you. How much do you need? Around $10,000. $10,000? That's quite an expensive rent. Well, it's not just the rent. There's other expenses in it as well. Please, the business is gonna go under soon if I don't do something. I really want to help you, but... $10,000 is a lot, you know. I thought you were rich. My family is, but that doesn't mean I am. Right now, my husband and I are living off of our own paychecks. But I heard you got a lot of money from your parents not so long ago. Like, a lot. How do you know about that? I heard it from my mom, so I was thinking you would spare me some of that money. But we were planning on saving that money for when we have a child. My husband and I already decided on it, so... Please! It's not like you have a child yet, so just help your sister out! I guess you're right. But I have to ask my husband, so give me some time. Thanks! Please let me know ASAP! And just like that, she asked me if she could borrow money from me. I wasn't really up for it, but she was my sister-in-law and a member of our family. I brought this up with my husband that night, but he didn't seem like he was too thrilled to give her money either. But in the end, we decided to help her out and lended her the money. 
but it turned out to be a mistake. Soon after, we lended her the money. Hey, when are you coming home? Hmm, I have some more things I need to get done, so it might take a while. Feel free to go to bed. Alright, I had something I wanted to talk to you about, but... I'm on break now, so we can talk it over text if that's okay with you. It's about Yurina. Oh, my dumbass sister? What did she say this time? To tell you the truth, I've been lending her some money after we made the initial deposit. What? How did I not know about this? I'm sorry. She told me to keep you out of it, so... It's okay. Sorry. I wasn't mad at you. Obviously, I'm not taking the money out of your savings account. I'm just taking money out of my personal account. But that's still your money! How much have you given her? She asked me to lend her relatively small amount of money a few times now. I know I shouldn't have given it to her, but every time I thought to myself, well, if it's just a few hundred bucks... But recently, it's gotten too frequent for me to keep quiet about it. Hmm? Okay. I'll do something about it. I'm sorry. I know I should have asked you first. Yeah, that would have been nice, but what's done is done. My shameless idiot sister is to blame for all this, so don't worry about it. Besides, she hasn't even given us the $10,000 back yet. And if she's coming to you for more money, that's ridiculous. That's right. After we first lended her the money, my sister-in-law started to come to see me every once or two weeks to ask for some money. And the day I told my husband about what had been going on, he came home looking like his soul had drained out from him. Apparently, that was because his sister wouldn't budge. So please, just stop asking her for more money. I'm borrowing her money, not yours, so stay out of it. This is about my wife. Obviously I should have a say in this. So you're saying you don't care if my business goes under? If the nail salon goes under, both mom and I are going to lose our means to pay back our debt. And if that happens, are you going to take care of us? And just like that, she was not willing to give in. Apparently, she's been like this since they were kids, and my husband has never managed to convince my sister of anything. I also heard from my husband that my sister-in-law's nail salon was also co-owned by my mother-in-law, who went through a divorce a few years ago. And like Yurina said, if they close the nail salon, they'll lose their livelihood. My husband obviously doesn't want that, so he can't be too hard on Yurina. But he didn't give up. He gave up on convincing his sister and set his eyes on his mother, who he believed he could convince. So, he sent a text message to his mother right in front of me, but... All I'm asking her is to stop coming to us for money. I mean, don't you usually borrow money from your parents first? That's easy for you to say. It's not like I have that much saved up. That makes two of us then. We're not rich like she thinks we are. There's no way that's true. Sayaka comes from a very wealthy family, right? That doesn't mean she gets an allowance from them every month. We're spending our own money to get by. We're just like any other married couple. But don't you think that's a bit of a waste? Why don't you ask her parents for financial assistance? That'll help us out a lot as well, and we all win. But we've already decided as a couple. We're not going to rely on any handouts. That's not exactly the healthiest way to get by. We decided that we would try to make a living on our own without any handouts. So we haven't touched the money Sayaka got from her parents yet either. Huh. Why are you so serious about this stuff? Besides, you're gonna get all of her family's money eventually. But until that happens, we're planning on getting by on our own. Do you have a problem with that? I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but... Anyway, just tell Yurina. But we're not even talking about your money to begin with. So if Sayaka isn't comfortable with giving Yurina money anymore, then she should tell that herself. It's not that easy. It's her sister-in-law we're talking about. It's obviously difficult for her to be honest with her. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask. My friends and I were planning to go on a trip, but I'm running low on cash. Can you lend me like 500 bucks? What, did you not listen to anything I just said?! And so, he couldn't convince his mother either. Seems like my Yurina got her stubborn personality from her mother. I didn't want to waste the effort that my husband put into convincing them though, so I stopped lending my money to Yurina from that point on. But, every time she would try to convince me otherwise, so it was a bit of a pain in the ass. But around when all that was going on, my father had a heart attack and passed away. My mom died a few years back as well, so all of his assets were passed down to me. In total, I received about $3 million, 
which was way more money than I knew what to do with. Of course, I wouldn't have complained about having that kind of money if I wasn't in the situation that I was in at the time. Hey, how much did you inherit from your parents? It was a lot. How much? It's gotta be north of a million dollars, right? Yeah. Oh, that must be nice. What are you planning on using it on? I haven't decided yet. It's been less than a month since my dad died, so I'm not really in the mood anyway. If you don't have any plans for it, how about investing it in my business? What? With that kind of money, I could move our store to a much better location and get all new equipment. And I could hire more employees so I don't have to work too much as much as I do now. That sounds good, right? Let's do it. Wait, hold on. I'm not ready for that conversation. Oh, come on. You won't be able to use all of it anyway. Then use it for the good of your family. She really didn't care about my loss and was laser focused on the money and the money only. I knew this was coming, but I didn't think she'd come asking me for it this quickly and aggressively. I was trying to figure out how to respond when I got a message from my mother-in-law. I heard you were investing your money in our business. Thanks. I can't tell you how big of a help this is gonna be. Well, I haven't really decided on if I'm gonna do that yet. Oh, come on. Don't be selfish. It's for your family. I'm sure your father would have wanted you to use this money for us. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. If you're gonna invest in our business, could you pay for the remodeling of our house as well? What? This house is starting to show its age, and I always wanted to remodel this house, and this seems like the perfect opportunity for it. Wait, I guess it'll be better if we just buy an entirely new house. What do you think? I haven't said yes to any of this yet. And just like her daughter, my mother-in-law tried to squeeze money out of me. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. When I told my husband about what had happened, he was furious. He was about to go back to his place and yell at his family in their faces, but I stopped him before he could actually do it. I then told him about how I anticipated something like this happening, and how I prepared a countermeasure. Basically, all this was happening because I had too much money for my own good. So if I just... Hey, I went to talk to a real estate agent earlier and I found the perfect place for our new store. Apparently we need to make an initial deposit, so can you lend me the money by the end of this week? Sorry, but I don't remember saying that I would pay for your new house. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm never going to invest or give you any of my money. Not ever. What? What do you mean? I told you already, if you're not gonna use that money, it's better off being spent with us. We're your family. I already bought new equipment for the new location, so you're gonna have to give me the money soon. You bought new equipment without knowing if you'd even get any money from me? And besides, the money is going to be spent elsewhere. What are you going to spend it all on anyway? Actually, my husband and I are going to use the money to start a new company. You're joking, right? No, it's true. We've been talking about it for a while now. It's gonna be a while before it gets up and running, but we've already started the process of establishing the company. We've decided to invest all the money I inherited into our new business, so I can't use the money for other things anymore. That's right. My husband and I decided to start a new business. I wasn't lying when I said that we had been talking about making a startup for a while. And we were finally able to put our dreams into shape with my father's inheritance. But things weren't over. I still had my mother-in-law to deal with. So, you're starting up a new business, huh? I think you should rethink this. It's not easy being a business owner, you know. But you're a business owner yourself. That's how I know how hard it is to own a business. This is for your own good. Don't do it. But it's already been decided. Please, I beg you. What's it to you how we spend our money? I know you wanted a new house, but... Alright, I'll tell you the truth. We're in a really tough spot financially right now. Is the nail salon not doing well? Yeah, but that's not all. Anyway, we have no choice to go bankrupt if you don't help us. Apparently, her and Yurina got caught in a pyramid scheme and had a significant amount of money taken away from them. It was the kind of scam that you'd see anywhere. They were told that they would get the money that they invested back tenfold. They were lured into it by a friend who they trusted, so they invested a lot of money into it. It was enough to make the nail salon go under. 
All the money that I gave Yurina was used to pay back the debt that she accumulated from the scam. And they were asking for the money inherited not because they wanted a new house or to remodel their current one, but because they needed to pay back their debts. If they would have been honest with me from the start, maybe I would have thought about helping them. But their pride got in the way of them telling me the truth. My husband and I were already fed up with how my mother-in-law and Yurina had been treating me. So we didn't feel like helping them even after finding out the truth. So the two ended up losing their home and their business and now live in a life of poverty. My husband and I on the other hand have got our new business up and running and we're working hard every day to grow it.